sitting on the outside. But thanks be to God, Amen. which always causes us to triumph through Jesus Christ. He sent His Son, Brother Chris, uh, to die on the cross for you and me, so that whosoever will could come. Amen. Amen for the grace of God. Amen for Acts chapter number 10 tonight uh, uh, where, where God said, I am not a respecter of persons. Where, where the Gentiles, brother Chris, had the same opportunity as the Jews. I don't know. I, I, I studied this and I enjoyed it. And I hope that we all enjoyed tonight as much as I did when I was studying it. Uh, if you got your Bibles, we're in Acts 10. The Bible said there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, one that feared God with all of his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius, and when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. And now send men unto Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodgeth with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou ought to do. Now before I go any further tonight, I want to go back to uh, that singing we had and that singer talking about a moment and then Montana bringing it up and talking about her uh, poem that she wrote about a moment. I want you to know that God places the times in our lives where there's a moment, Brother Chris, that, that God just wants to show us something. Uh, uh, he wants to show out and I thank God for those moments Amen. when God comes on the scene, Brother Chris. So here's Cornelius. He is a devout man. Uh, the Bible says one that feared God uh, uh, with all of his house, one that gave much alms to the people and he prayed to God always. Brother Tom, I'm going to say if you define that, I'm going to say he is a man uh, seeking God. He is Amen. looking something more. He is coming to church every service. Uh, he's seeking God. He's giving his tithes. He's giving his arms, Brother Chris. He is looking for something extra. How many of you tonight come here tonight looking for something extra? You need to a touch from God. You need the word from God. Keep on. Don't give up. The Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 6, I think I even read this Sunday, but it's good reading. It says, let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Now the Bible says Cornelius prayed to God always. What if he had quit, Bo Tom? What if he had quit? What if he got tired and said, well, I've been paying alms and I've been praying and this ain't nothing happening. I might as well just go back to my old life, live like the devil, I might as well just give up. What would have happened? Cornelius would have missed the biggest blessing Amen. of his life. I want to tell y'all a story about my daddy. I don't know why I'm going this way tonight, but this is what God says, so we're going to obey the Lord. And a lot of y'all have already heard it, but guess what? We're here again. Mom and daddy went deep sea fishing one time. But Tom, they go down to the Orange Beach, Gulf Shores, wherever they was at. A storm had come through the day or two before, and the seas was raging. The captain of the boat said, well, he said, that's about six or eight foot swells. He said, but if we go out there, we will load the boat up. So Daddy and Nicky and Sam, all them, let's go, let's go, let's go. We're going to go. We ain't scared. Six or eight foot waves don't sound that big, but I'll tell you what, you get out there in that little bitty boat, and that joker goes straight up in the air and comes yeah. back down and water sprays all the way over the back of the boat. Amen. And it done that for some two or three hours, however long they rode out there. And the women and the men, both the men and the women all began to get sick. But Tom, they're five minutes away from the reef. They're, they've done been driving for two or three hours. They're five minutes away from the biggest boatload of fish they've ever caught. And they said, we want to go back. We're sick. The captain said, look, I know you're sick, but we've done drove two or three hours. If you can wait five more minutes, we'll load the boat up. And 
they said, no, we're sick. Let's go back. Man, they was five minutes. The fish, five minutes. Look, that two or three hours that they suffered through of up and down and up and down and up and down was lost. They had nothing to show for it but a bunch of sick bellies and a bunch of throw up. They had no reward because they give up five minutes before they got to their destination. Sometimes I believe us as Christians, Brother Tom, I believe we ride the waves up and down and up and down and up and down and we're five minutes from the biggest blessing of our life and Satan talks us into turning around. Cornelius, at this time, hadn't had nothing. He's just worshiping God. But listen to what happens. The Bible says, when he looked, uh, the Bible says that about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God come into him and said, Cornelius. And I ain't going to read all that again, but he tells him, he said, you send after one named Peter. So verse number seven says, and when the angel which spoke unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on, Corn uh, waited on him continually, and when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. On the morrow, that means the next day, as they went on their journey and drew near unto the city, Peter went up on top of the house to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but they made ready and he fell into a trance. And he saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of all the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice unto him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Peter said, I can't eat this food. This is unclean beast. This is unclean. I have never, never had something unclean touch my lips. Listen to what the Bible says. And there came a voice unto him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, No, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spoke unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. In other words, what God has cleaned, don't you say nothing against it. This was done three times, and the vessel was received up again unto heaven. Oh, Peter is bad about things having to happen three times. Jesus asked him over there in the book of John, do you love me? Lord, you know I love you. Feed my sheep. Guess what? Peter didn't go feed his sheep. That's why I had to tell him again. He said, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Feed my lambs. Yeah. Peter didn't steal. Hadn't got up and done nothing. He's still just sitting there, Brother Chris. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, God will tell me and he'll tell me and he'll tell me. Yeah. Sometimes it takes me a minute to realize, hey, God is speaking to me. Yeah. But anyway, this happens three times. Listen to verse 17 and, and put yourself here because this happens to me a lot. Yeah. Now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision was, which he had said he should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made an inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. So Peter's sitting there thinking, man, what in the world does this vision mean? He, he's, he's still don't understand, Brother Tom, but boy, I thank God that he shows us. He'll show us in the right time, in the right moment. So those men that came from Cornelius' house is looking for Peter. Verse 19, while Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom you seek. What is the cause wherefore ye are come? And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, and one that feareth God, and of a good report among all the nation of the Jews, was warned from God by a holy angel to send for you in his house 
and to hear his words of thee. Then called he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And the morrow after, they entered into Caesarea. And Cornelius waited for them and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, You know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Amen. You see, that vision from Tom was Amen. just so Peter would go when he was called upon to go. You see, it was not lawful for Peter, being a Jew, to go into a Gentile's home. Peter wouldn't even, it was against their law for him to go. But God said, what I call clean, don't you call common run clean. Amen. Cornelius said four days ago. Hold on, I'm skipping ahead. Hang on. Verse 29. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying. As soon as I was sent for, I asked therefore for what intent ye have sent for me. And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing, and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Boy, I tell you what, how would you feel? When the Holy Ghost come on you and said, hey, it's okay, son. Don't fear. I've heard your prayers. I've, I've seen what you've been doing. I've heard you cry, son. And I'm about to work on your behalf. Uh, praise God for the confidence that the angel of the Lord gives to Cornelius. Have you ever had that happen to you? You've been praying and praying and praying, and all of a sudden God says, I got you. I got this. I've had ten folk, mama, that I've tried to pray for, and I prayed for them. Boy, God put a burden on my heart, and I prayed for them, prayed for them, prayed for them. And finally, I get to the point God said, I got you. That's enough. Does that mean they're here today? No. But I still believe God's got them. I still believe God's got them in the time he's got for them. Amen. He goes on, he says, and said Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa, and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon the Tanner by the seaside, who when he cometh shall speak unto thee. Immediately therefore I sent to you, and you have well done that you are come. Now therefore are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded to thee. Now check this out. Peter went to Cornelius' house trying to figure out what Cornelius wanted. He didn't have a clue that when he got there that Cornelius was going to say, hey, let's hear what God's given you. Go ahead and tell me what God's given you. I like that. Peter went there seeking Cornelius, but Cornelius is saying, no, I'm ready to hear what God's given you. Verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, here y'all go, y'all ready to shout? <laughs> of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of person. Amen. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted Ooh. with him. Amen. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word I say you know which was published throughout all of Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the Amen. devil for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up on the third day 
and showed him openly. Not to all the people, but unto witnesses. Chosen before of God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. To give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive the remission of sins. Boy, I tell you what, old Peter is preaching the word of God. He is preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hey, he said that through his name, whosoever believed in him should receive remission of sins. That's enough gospel, Brother Shane, to save the world. Yes. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word, and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water? that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord, then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Talk about a divine appointment. Boy, everything just fell right into place, Miss Dana. Everything, Cornelius was over here praying, Brother Chris, and the angel of the Lord come to him and told him just exactly what he needed to do, just exactly where he needed to go, just exactly whose house Peter was. Then Peter was over here, that is some two days journey. Some now think it took him two days to go from town to town. He was over here minding his own business up on the roof praying and here comes God in a vision and shows Peter, hey, what I call coming, don't you call unclean. Or what I call clean, don't you call common. And while he's up there and God's revealing that to him, Brother Chris, here comes those from Cornelius' house. Hey, we're here to see Peter. And about that time, the Spirit of God tells Peter, hey, there's three men downstairs looking for you. When you get down there, you go with them. Don't doubt it. Don't ask no questions. It don't matter that they're Gentiles. I said you go. So Peter goes downstairs and he says, hey, I'm the guy you're looking for. I'm Peter. I'm Simon Peter. I know I ain't met you. You ain't, you ain't called from me yet, but I'm who you're looking for. And he follows them another two days back over to Cornelius' house. And when he gets there, Cornelius begins to tell him, hey, four days ago I was fasting. Praise God. When's the last time you fasted, folks? He said, Brother Matt, God ain't answering my prayers. I ain't never seen a vision. I ain't never seen no angels. Well, guess what? Maybe you ought to try fasting a little bit. Maybe you ought to try to pray always, just as it said that Cornelius did. Pray to God always. I'm going to tell you what, the Bible does not lie, Brother Chris. And Jesus said, Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For anybody that asketh, receiveth, and anybody that seeketh, findeth, and anybody that knocketh, it shall be opened. He said, What? Man of you, if your son asked you for bread, would you give him a stone? And what man of you, if your son asked for a fish, would you give him a serpent? He said, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children that ask of you, how much more is your heavenly Father going to give those that ask him? Amen. Amen. But we have not because, because we right. ask not. And when we do ask, Brother Shane, we ask amiss, seeking to consume it of our own lust. We ain't really wanting to get closer to God. We want the bigger bank account. We ain't really wanting to be in the will of God. We want the better call. We ain't really wanting to do the things of God or, or the work of God. We want the praise of Him. That's why we ask it amiss. Because we're not asking in the will of God. We ain't, we ain't looking for God's will. We're looking for ours. I'm going to tell you what, when our will lines up with God's will, oh, buddy, you better look at it. You see, that's what's going on with Cornelius. Cornelius' will was lining up with God's will. Cornelius was seeking God, not for fortune and fame, but he was seeking God. He wanted eternal life, Brother Chris. 
And guess what God done? He sent him the messenger that was going to tell him how to get eternal life. You see, paying his alms, Brother Chris, wasn't going to get him there. The only thing that gets you there is by the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's why Peter had to come. Peter came and preached Jesus Christ hard as he could go from verse 34 to 44. I'm going to read that one more time because this is good preaching. Then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. You want me to tell you what that means tonight? That means it don't matter who you are. It don't matter what color your skin is. It don't matter how much money you got in your bank account. It don't matter what sins you've done. It don't matter who you come from. It don't matter. God is no respecter of persons. Amen. That, that, what that means tonight is every single one of us in this room and everybody outside of this room all has the same opportunity to come to God. He loves every single one of us. And he made a way for all to be saved. And he says here, he says, but in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto you the children of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. Amen. That word I say, you know, which was published throughout all of Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up on the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto the witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. That word remission means forgiveness. Whosoever believeth in him shall receive forgiveness of sins. That's salvation tonight, folks. I don't know how many times it says in the Bible, but it says the much. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Romans 10 9. Whosoever believeth, or for with a heart man believeth, and with a mouth confession is made to salvation. It's all it's all the same. And you know what happens when you begin to preach the word? The Holy Spirit of God calls. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. And as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry a certain day. Thank God for the Word. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank God for His amazing grace. Amen. Salvation come to a bunch of Gentiles. Amen. And because of that, we got our opportunity to today. And I thank God that He's given us that opportunity. We'll ask Devin to do the place of song. Nation of Nations tonight. You're able to stand.